Welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. I, I was going and doing like a random wander to a new location and I ran into a bunch of uh, shapes, shadow shapes to fight. So I was just in the middle of a battle there and figured why not, I'll just, whatever, flip flip past that. You won! Take your non-Euclidean bullcrap elsewhere, bozos! And Professor Adams tells you some boring facts about the foes you just defeated. Has he been doing that every time? I don't know. Someone pointed out in the comments that I should go back to Rufus's lab, and oh, one of those newfangled metal detectors right next to the pipe there. They basically just said interact with the pipe. I was never going to come back to that. That's one instance where, like, it doesn't matter that the hint was overt. There was nothing pointing me there. I can't believe I missed it, because, you know, I probably would have checked the mirrors and the shelf and everything else, and, like, I... I would have never had a reason to come back here, so I'm help. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Ask Rufus if you can borrow it. Sure, if you have a good and specific reason for needing it. I need to find an old key so I can stop a little girl's house from burning down 230 odd years ago? That's good enough for me. Knock yourself out. Rufus's metal detector. A portable metal detector you borrowed from Rufus. These won't be commercially available commercially for three more years, so please be careful with it. It's funny that the team behind this loathing series went to the effort of like looking up specifically when things were invented so that they could always tie that in in like little gags and references like that a head pops out of the storm drain it must be that used to te uh, used textbook salesman again because there can't be too many of these guys you haven't been buying your textbooks new, have you? I told you, it's a scam. Buy used, always used. Speaking of, can I te te tempt you in advanced vascular anatomy? This textbook is a comprehensive atlas of the human circulatory system. It even lists all the campgrounds for white blood cells. <laughs> Grants a max HP perk. Uh, I, I'll buy it, yeah. A good deal and a great victory for free thinking. Don't ever buy your textbooks new, my friend, and don't let them ever make you think you gotta. He drops back down into a sewer, just as campus security rides the, uh, turns around the corner on the bike. Yeah, so maybe we'll find a few more of these. Oh, a moment, if it pleases you. I'll, I'll read my book first. The book is full of diagrams of veins and arteries and a third kind of blood vessel you didn't even know about until now. Just like capillaries, or is it something more advanced? It's complicated. It's going to take some blood, sweat, and tears to get through it. You memorize all the vein maps, and in doing so, discover a bunch of extra blood in weird corners of your body. <laughs> Comprehensively vein. You've learned where all of your blood is. Maximum HP. You're so delighted by this that you throw the book up into the air, and a passing bird grabs it and flies away. Enjoy, bird. I always like to draw attention to things that I like even if I know only a thousand people are going to see this video, which is still, like, an ex exciting amount. I'm so very happy with that. Thank you all. But, like, you know, I wish. I wish I could tell a million people. People need to go and watch Chris and Jack. They're, like, the some of the funniest sketch comedians on this website. They make, like, one sketch a month. I think they've slowed down lately. But there's one on alien abduction, where the alien is running tests on the human, and one of them is hold your breath and... And his next test is hold your blood, and the guy's kind of like, ah, <laughs> and he kind of just moves on from there. Uh, I've always think of that gag. I think it's so funny, and this is another funny. The different corners of blood just makes me think of that same gag. Chris and Jack, they're so funny. One of the two of them is the voice of what's his name in Avatar: The Last Airbender, like the brother. I'm blanking on the name right now. Very weird tie in there. <laughs> Professor Adams is looking around bemusedly. Friend Grammy, it occurs to me that my old office here at the Institute may be yet may yet be accessible. And if so, then my binder of research notes might be of some value to us. Oh really? Where is your office? At the far end of the infinite corridor. How is that possible? Mine was one of the first offices in the wing, you see, and they began the corridor from the end. <laughs> I guess it I guess it has an end, doesn't it? Uh okay, I'll I'll wait here. Oh okay, I finally get to do one of the companion vignettes. I've been hearing about these and it took whatever forty episodes to get around to it almost. You pause to mop your brow with your pocket handkerchief. Dare say the infinite corridor has gotten longer since last you were here? But that length 
You have returned to your old office and discovered to your delight that it is just as you left it, but dustier, perhaps. So you get to play as the character, Professor Adam's old office. Ah, uh, all your books are still here, even your autographed copy of Newton's Du Matu Corpurum in Gyrum. Fascinating stuff that, though a bit outside your wheelhouse. Ah, uh, this takes me back. In the old days, you were obliged to use coffee cups for your experiments, as test tubes had not yet been invented. When was that invented? Speaking of dates of inventions, the Dean eventually made a very strict rule against japery and practical jokes. Ah, your old assistant's desk. What was his name again? Smith? Smiths? Smith? <laughs> you do recall that he used to give you merry hell for mispronouncing it all the time. You wonder if he ever made tenure. Ah, your old desk. And you note with fa satisfaction that you're standing... I wonder if I'm supposed to be saying, like, defk. Satisfaction that your standing orders to the cleaning lady to never touch it have not been fallen by the wayside. Look at your notes. You locate the spine of your notes binder in the detritus and yank it out with a quick jerk, such that the remaining remainder of the pile settles itself without collapsing. You'd be great at Jenga, man. Probably... 50 years before that's invented, but you'll love it. Professor Adams learns a new skill. Boring lecture. <laughs> and, ah, uh, your first periodic table. Earth, fire, air, water. Phlogiston. Things were so much simpler back then. It's just the five squares in the corner there. That's incredible. That's so funny. Uh, that might have been it then. I thought these vignettes would be notably longer. I thought it would be like a half hour long side quest adventure, such and such. You have recovered the notes for which you came? Proceed back to Grammy? Yes, indeed. Well met, Grammy. I have returned. Hi, Professor. Did you find what you were looking for? Indeed I have. And I dare say they may come in handy in times ahead. Great. Let's go. I, I, I look forward to seeing how... That benefits us in battle. What exactly, how exactly it works. Greasy Steve nods as you approach. Give him the laundered meat. You glance around to make sure nobody is watching and slide the sack of freshly laundered meat across the table. Greasy Steve opens the sack and glances around. Nice job, kid. Here's your payment. He picks up the briefcase, empties the sack into it, and slides the briefcase back to you. <laughs> Seriously? He shrugs and goes back to stuffing his face. Don't have a problem call you need anything again. They'll call me when they need me, basically. Well, enjoy yourself. He's too busy eating to talk right now. Uh, we got our, our perks and things. Open up 500! You actually do get, like, tons of money from doing those quests. Well worth it. Great options. I want to head back to Ocean City because I want to see the new storefront. And I want to do something at home. <laughs> well, check. Check and see if the mob has a new quest. That's all it was. Ten things I hat about you. All hats certified louse free. Well, that's a, a relief. Wow, I don't know most of these. He's looking around bemusedly. Do you have anything to say specifically about hats? Ooh, that looks an awful lot like an old hard hat of mine. The store's proprietor nods politely to you. Hi, my name is Grammy. Pleased to meet you. I'm Albert. Why aren't you wearing a hat? Have you ever heard the phrase, familiarity breeds contempt? Oh, gotcha. What's for sale? A driving cap. You don't drive, but it never hurts to have a really aerodynamic hat. Regenerate an extra one AP per round. A flowery cloche. This hat has a real rose on it, so you'll be able to smell it without e even stopping. You can't be afraid of what you can't see, and with this, you can't see about half of everything. <laughs> a jeweled turban. The enchantment on the jewel makes you stronger, and the jewel itself makes it look like you have a third eye. <laughs> and mail carrier. Neither rain, snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night is gonna mess up your hair and an old cowboy hat. The only way cowboys lived to get old is if they were good at shooting. Well, I'll buy all the hats because they will all come with discounts. Uh, louse free, huh? 
Albert beams with pride. Just so, this is not some back alley haberdashery. A louse has never made and will never make its home in one of my hats. I give you my word as a businessman. But hey, you must have some loused hats in the back, right? Sir, you insult me. I do not traffic in loused hats. Really, that is quite offensive. Come on, you can tell me. I won't lose my license for what you suggest. My goodness, I don't wish to discuss this any further. Weird that we could push him on that as, as hard as we did. Like, there's no real reason to really grind into that guy and make him feel bad about his hats. Do you expand your selection with time? I feel like I've checked this before and I don't really recall. Four damage to all enemies. That seems really good. Well, uh, I'll, I'll buy it, sure. I think that's new. Mysticality plus physical damage and Eldritch Butter Knife. That, I think that is also new. Um, and probably slightly better than my current thing, but like, uh, you would have to add a sharpening thing and different stuff that I don't have right now, I don't think. Mysticality plus six, whereas that just deals four. This is pl Mysticality plus. So that, no wonder that does so much more damage. Probably just gonna leave that one. And then I had to go home for the messages. There's two messages. You check the note, it says call Don T and message from Rufus. I'll call the mob first. Don Toblerone speaking. Don, that was unusually concise. Are you feeling okay? The boss is mad about our telephone bill. I, I've been encouraged to keep this brief. I see, well, what's the job? Greasy Steve will have the details for you. Ugh, okay, I guess we can go talk to Greasy Steve again. And before we move on, I'm, I'm bouncing around a little bit. I will come back to there. But first things first, I'm going to go get paid for all my hats that I just paid to own. So, you know, it's a little bit roundabout. <laughs> but it's free money. Oh, I, not where I meant to... No, yeah, that is where I meant to go. Yes, perfect. <laughs> no, no... no incorrect options there. Someday I'll learn how to open up junk mail. It's a very odd thing to have just not at all figured out. I don't know if there's a, a, a point in this where he will be like, wow, 100 hats. That's incredible. You sure do love hats and you have such range and versatility as a, a model. Here is a, a million dollars. I just, I don't know. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem like it's really building to anything. It's just a random way to go out and get some money I think so I've dealt with that feels nice to like just quickly scratch that off crystal dream lake uh, a moment if it please you okay you want to talk again uh do you smell that hmm? no no well maybe something's a little off there is a distinct odor of rotting meat nearby, but with some unusual undertones. Since my unbronzing, I have been quite unable to smell anything at all. Something in the chemical makeup of this odor must have reactivated my nasal abilities. I do believe it would behoove me to investigate further. You want to investigate rotting meat stink? It's probably just a dead bear carcass or something. Nevertheless, the spirit of inquiry is one to which I have devoted my life's work. Okay, go have fun. I can't believe I never found one of these for, like, Molly, and now all of a sudden I found two. Like, maybe hers just come much later in the game. The Amorphophorlalis titanum. They are said to grow only in far-off Sumatra. Is, is this one of those plants that genuinely just smells like meat? I think it does look like it. It smells awful even from from way over here. The magnitude of the stench beggars belief. Uh, so nasty. I love it. They only bloom like once a year and they just genuinely smell like rotting meat. And I think they look like it. I think they're like pink and fleshy looking. Incredible. It's more than 12 feet tall. The tallest recorded specimen was only a 10 footer. Breathe deeply. My word. What a combination of unpleasant odiferous chemicals. Uh, if that means it stinks, then yeah, I can't even describe it. If you will allow me an attempt. <gasps> Fascinating. I believe I detect dimethyl trifluoride, ethyl flacurate acid, and trimethylamine. I, I obviously just kind of skipped through some of those. They're difficult scientific words anyways. 
with incorrect letters inserted in them, just blowing past that. But trimethylamine, that's something I can pronounce. <laughs> What's that mean? These are the chemicals that produce the smells of Limburger cheese, sweaty socks, and rotting fish, respectively. And I can smell them! It's a miracle! I'm going to throw up everything I've ever eaten in my entire life. His chemicals will be more effective. Dope, okay, he's just, he's just better now. Uh, sweet. Well, that was an invigorating little adventure for the mind and the sinuses. Are you ready to return? Do you enjoy your rotting bear carcass? In fact, the source of the order was revealed to be a marvelous specimen of Amorphophallus titanum. Amorphophal uh, what now? Known in the vernacular as the corpse flower. Quite marvelous. I don't know what to say about that other than I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> Continue on your way. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for you. It seems like you, you just had fun with it. That's all that matters. You see your past self in the distance heading up the road towards you. Must be time to give him the Mobius ring. Ah, uh, you can't not give it to him. Jeez, it's a good ring though. It seems a shame to have to give it up, but easy come, easy go. You try to take the ring off. Boy, that try is real ominous, huh? It doesn't budge. You try swapping another ring onto your main ring finger and that works, but now you're just wearing the Mobius ring on the back of your hand. You switch them back and try to take it off again, but no dice. Is this thing cursed? The other, you said you shouldn't use it, and you'd find out why if you did. Being unable to give up a good ring doesn't seem like much of a curse, though. Wait, how did he give you the ring? He must have figured out a way to break the curse. Something about someone named Chester at Delphine Farm? There aren't any farms around here, though. It must be something you'll find out about later. In the meantime, you'd better make yourself scarce before the other you sees you. I wonder if I hadn't put it on, if I probably would have given it back there. But no, I thought it was a strong, valuable ring, and I decided, nuts to you, I'm just going to do it. I'm heading back down into the Proctor's house to search around down here and see what the hell... If there's anything that's a hint for the combination lock. The ward and dusty remains of an ancient ritual circle. Empty, empty, trash, nothing but burned books. Was there something I found down here before that I should have made use of that I can't now? Uh, it's a shame it's such a gloomy day. It's nice to get out in nature once in a while. Fwa! Fwa? Certainly! Nature presents a wondrous collection of herbs and other ingredients, but having to go outdoors and pick them? That is what grad students are for. I'm a man of science, waxing idyllic over nature's supposed charms as the domains of poets and other layabouts. Achoo! <laughs> he's, he's just got allergies, maybe? Achoo! Bless you! Thank you! Achoo! Achoo! Jeez, it isn't even hay fever season. Blasted allergies? Hasn't science solved this problem yet? We only just got paper tissues four years ago. <laughs> I sure hope there aren't a lot more of those giant spiders creeping around here. Oh, doubtless there are. All the most diabolical creatures of nature make their home in woods such as these. That's what the opposite, uh, what's with the opposite of reassuring? Unproprietous, if we should encounter a basilisk, be certain not to allow it to breathe upon you or look at you. <laughs> These weird shadow monsters I've been seeing have got me a little worried. They are unsettling for sure. A bad omen. You're an alchemist. You must be familiar with weird, spooky, occulty stuff, right? Have you ever seen these things? Like, uh, things like these before? Only by going too long without sleeping. Oh, he's seeing a, a paralysis demon. Those are the worst. Or if I'd been experimenting with grain fungi or toad extracts again. Dude's huffing magic mushrooms and licking toads it's such a gloomy day that's all i gotta say to you what the hell how do i get down there surely there's something check the footnote mm, france that's not a useful word go upstairs have i gone upstairs before i have i would have no words no words this is driving me nuts. Why? There has to be something that gives me the information I need for the lock in the past. There has to be. I'm here for some re- Prove. Prove. 
Nope, that's related to these tubs. It has nothing to do with that over there. Oh, come on. What the hell? There was some other reason I was here there. Oh, right, 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 right. I, I basically just had to go to here, and then I think I had to start wandering. I don't even know if I had to start from there, but... You spent some time poking around in the woods near Sandwich Village with Rufus's metal detector and unearthed a nearly impressive, nearly impressive pile of trash before finally finding what you hope is Delia's house key. Stuff we've seen a lot of. Extremely rusty old key, approximately 240 years old. Then you write Rufus SIT steam tunnels on the metal detector and stick it in a mailbox. Oh, that was the only use we had for it. All right, all right. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so simple. Hmm. I didn't mean to do that. I was actually just uh, meaning to return to that location. I'm totally fine with having a, a clone of myself because I'm real strong. I'm, I'm real useful in these battles. So having more of me is seemingly only a good thing if you were to ask me, and I'm certain you did, I need to go back in time and then unlock that door, flush yourself through. It's so gross. So gross. The door to the house is locked. Finally. What's it been, like 10 episodes more since that storyline was initiated? You check your pockets for an appropriate key, unlock the door, you brush off as much of the loose rust as you can, you think you can get away with without turning the entire key into loose rust, then slide it in the keyhole and carefully, carefully turn it. The lock clicks open and the key completely disintegrates. You peek in the front door and look around. It looks like nobody's home, which makes sense considering the door was locked. But people tend to lock doors when they're home. It's not that abnormal. <laughs> snoop around, refrain from snooping. No, I'm gonna snoop. Yeah, haha, I'm not sure why I even gave you the choice there. We both knew you were going to choose Snoop. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Totes, man. This must be Delia's bed? Looks like there's something behind it. How do we get at that? This oil lamp is kind of uncomfortably close to the curtains. A white ceramic plate painted with a nice forest scene. Pretty. No witch's brews here, maybe a witch's stew? Probably just a regular person's stew. A nice antique dining table, eventually. It's just a regular table right now. We can move the lamp. You carefully pick up the oil lamp and set it on the mantelpiece. That seems much safer. Did you know that the oil in this kind of lamp comes out of a sperm whale's head? Blubber lamp, or whatever that is, tell me more. <laughs> Okay, see, sperm whale fat renders down into pretty good lamp oil, better than other whales, but more importantly, they also have a reservoir full of really good oil in their heads, as much as 500 gallons of it. That's insane. And nobody knows why or what it's for, so once people realized that sperm whales were relatively populous within sailing distance of the colonial coast, it sparked an entire industry. The whaling industry in the colonies began in the 1640s, but that was a bit far south of here. F uh, fair bit. However, just two years ago, in 1690, whalers started working out of the islands around Lieutenant Harbor, or rather what would eventually come to be called Lieutenant Harbor after its in accidental enlistment and promotion during the War of 1774. The entire harbor, eh? And within a hundred years, those islands became the whaling capital of the world, until of course the whales ran out, but the industry was still able to flounder along until the invention of kerosene in the 1850s. Anyway, the point being, this lamp is really state-of-the-art technology around here. That was very interesting, thank you. <laughs> the, oh, the ways in which we've just decimated the ocean are just uh, horrific. Much better. Now can I reach the thing? A small steel lockbox with the name Delia painted on it. On second thought, messing around with the contents of the box could cause some sort of nasty paradox. We're already moving things around, does it matter at all? Perhaps we can go investigate it in the present time, the future. One more bit of poking around, because that house, the, the combination on that house is freaking me out. I've, I've talked to all of, uh, all of those branches, all of those options. The church? These nasty little kids. None of them wouldn't want to talk about the fact that they unlocked that house. I thought maybe that would be something. German word. I got nothing, man. Not, not a clue. Not a clue on that one. I, have, I assume the answer is like here in the general vicinity. 
Putnam House, which was nothing, there was nothing particularly unusual about it except that witches lived there. Most of the Putnam's family possessions have been stored for cataloging and preservation, but some notable pieces are on display here. Please do not touch. There's an old painted plate. This is the plate that used to be in the Putnam's mantelpiece. It's held up nicely over the last 236 years. The plaque on the plinth says this plate commemorates the founding of the town of Sandwich on All Hallows' Eve. How witchy can you get? <laughs> and you take a closer look and the plate does indeed have a date in the painting filigree around the edge, 31st of October, 1626. This plaque says this iron pan was probably for regular cooking, but we're pretty sure it was also used for making small batch potions. Sometimes, probably, who knows? The security guard is keeping a close eye on things in here, which honestly isn't very difficult since there's only two. Yeah, there is only, right, I thought you meant two eyes. There's also only two things, one per eye. Welcome to Putnam House. Please don't touch the exhibits, ask about them. Uh, sorry, sir, I just get paid to sand here and keep an eye on things. I don't actually know anything about the exhibits. I, this, is, so this is the same house. Does this house also have a, a guard doing his own thing? No, totally unrelated. Uh, rubbing paper sandwich cream, none of that. No, I don't need those things. One last look over here. Bleh. No, present time. It's always, it's always open at present time. That is not, that hasn't changed. I don't see anything like physically actually observably written, so that's also out as a solution. Now and again, now and again a puzzle just just has me completely stuck. Alright, Rufus, you want to talk about something other than your metal detector? I was scared he would like ask for it back. I didn't think that was actually what would happen, but you know. Uh, the number you have dialed is not in service. Please hang up. Rufus? Oh, it's you, Grammy. Sorry about the subterfuge. I had to tap into the university line to get a phone down here, and that isn't, strictly speaking, legal. Anyway, I think I've figured out the next step in building my quantum telecommunications device. Can you come to my lab as soon as possible? Uh, yeah. I could give that a, a shot for you. So, I have two different curses going on here. Oh. The book's curse. Right, yes, right, I hadn't figured this one out either, had I? Two, I got two difficult curses going on here. Um, why, well, did he always have that owl bird thing next to him there? See, I think he wants me to just sign a card with a certain Latin phrase, that is my best guess. I'm gonna try and work down this one more time, and I'm gonna kind of do so off camera, some guessing and checking, and if I figure it out, I'll go back through what it took to get there. Maybe I always have to follow up with the thing he says. If he says I don't respond to threats, I need to threaten him. If he says he doesn't respond to rhetorical questions, I need to give him one. Uh, but, but none of those, none of those are rhetorical. Recall and process. I made my thumbs bedfellows with your eyes. Do you remember that? See, that's still I'm still on the recall and process thing. I thought that I thought that was the recall and process, but maybe that's just recall. Uh, are you attached to your eyes? That's not really recall and process. Rubbing them together in my palms. Now I'm back to the threats thing. Dang it! I don't know. Okay. Uh, do you remember what happened when you were? Uh, okay. I think that's what it is. I think you more or less have to say the things that he is saying he doesn't respond to. Uh, so, I don't respond to threats. I, it sent me back a step. Look at me. What would happen uh, to a man who stands in my way? Don't respond to rhetorical questions. Very well, Henricus. Tell me. How would you like to die today? I don't respond to open questions. Do you remember what happened to me the first time you annoyed me? That's not really an open question. It's pretty direct, but apparently it worked. Uh, then it's the thing about attacking his eyeballs. Are you attached? Do you think you still will be by sunset? Had I, of all the different branches, did I never do that one? Fair, Grimheld, it is fairly one. You are right. I would not wish to lose my eyes and be deprived in turn of your fine beauty. Oh, flattery. Pig, step aside. It's not personal, Henricus. It's just a birthday card. Uh, yeah, it's not personal. Are you attached to your eyes? A sharp wit is yours indeed, Grimhild, but oh, 
If you had only lashed me with a Latin tongue, your barbs would ring like great poetry. You bore me with your Latin. <laughs> oh, is that... This is a foolish man. He is no danger to you. Okay, I can I can slip past him. Great. I can't interact with like that crow. That's all it took, hey? A birthday card to Emperor Gaius Julius Caesar Divus is a powerful document. There is no better opportunity for the tribes in the north to gain Caesar's notice and favor. Punch the card into the sky. <laughs> that uppercut was sick. I created a constellation. And that's how all of them were created, was by muscly barbarians punching them up into the sky. Consumatum S. The curse that once lodged within that forbidden and nasty text has been written and undone. Unwritten. And you find it in uh, you find in it a fascinating final chapter you did not notice before. A hundred one hundred and eleven delicious mutton recipes. Having lifted the curse, you realize now that. It's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. It grants an upgradable skill, meaty expertise, 10 new ways to prepare mutton. What a bounty. I'm excited to cook something. I'm a vegetarian. I don't really want to read this. Happy birthday, Caesar, whoever you are. Thanks, Grammy, but it's Jessica, not Caesar, and it, it's not my birthday. Oh, uh, my mistake. I'm, I'm way off base then, aren't I? Oh, is that already upgraded then? Uh, it, it was already at 30, I thought. Yeah, so I don't think that's actually been upgraded. There it is. I, it just hadn't been skipped back to, like, the front of my reading, of my inventory. This book is so much less scary than it used to be that it's now almost as boring as a real book. Ah, uh, yeah, we've already seen that. Having read the first ten chapters, you're ready to dive into the surprising and elusive final chapter. The final chapter has a density of information that is going to take some time to parse. There are some mutton recipes for sure, but also detailed information on basically every kind, other kind of meat that exists. Do you want to foray into the text? Um, yeah, it's pretty cheap to do so. The chapter goes into dismaying detail about all kinds of meat and you glean some useful facts that will help you find more meat than ever before. Meaty expertise? You know a lot about all kinds of meat. You can go further enhance your media expertise if you have the time and energy to devote to it. I wonder how many times I can upgrade this. Among all the facts and figures, you've learned that the author grew up in a cabin made of meat. That kind of affluence boggles the mind. More, in one section, you glean a method for collecting interest on loans from people you have not lent meat to. The accounting is complicated, but the results speak for themselves. The author continues to convey remarkable financial advice. Maybe you should start reading the final chapter of all your cookbooks. The author continues, okay, uh, more, more. Uh, I'm blasting through my, my experience. The 100 kind of feels like it would be the roof. Not even, not even, it can go further than that. But I figured, what the hell. Let's just like blast that through the top, layer that together with some of these other uh, benefits that I have and like I'm just gonna be raking in the dough that meaty dough doughy meat either way doesn't matter it's for me and I earned it <laughs> I will run my way back out to campus I will go visit Rufus um probably actually one thing I'm gonna do here like off camera a little bit at least a little, a little partially I'll go blast my way through some fish just for funsies as well, because that's just going to be uh, convenient or necessary. I don't know what it is. It's a thing. It's a thing that I'm stuck doing. But I'm going to go down there and fight, like, wave after wave after wave. Look at all that meat from just, like, one battle. <laughs> I'm going to fight, like, a hundred robot things, and I'm just going to do that off camera because, like, especially with two of me, <laughs> it's, it's going to be kind of a joke. So, I'm just going to grind out experience through that and money and, and what have you. Let me just see. Do I get meat from those? I don't. It's just experience, but still. I, I'd rather load up on that. So, thank you all so much for watching. Pitch me on some episode titles. Ah! The spooky is over, over the top ray gun blasts there. And I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>